your name we bow in adoration to your excellency thank you lord for this privilege to come to you this morning thank you because as we share your word this morning you will cause your glory to radiate through our lives you will open our eyes of understanding you will show yourself mighty in everything we are going to do this morning in the mighty name of jesus lord open my mouth oh god use my mouth for your glory and for your honor father we pray let no man see me but let them see jesus crucified and raised in the mighty name of jesus thank you everlasting father for in jesus mighty name we pray let's be seated in god's wonderful present this morning hallelujah first and foremost i want to say happy birthday to myself this morning hallelujah we give god praise we give god glory we want to thank god for all that he has done and he has shall yet do we give him praise now this has been declared our month of open doors um i'm sure the first sunday we have looked at keys to open doors last week we are looking at engaging and embracing the open doors and i think pastor has um carefully uh, look upon those words and we have been truly been blessed now this morning we are looking at opposition to your open doors opposition to your open doors thank you choir because every gate must be lifted opposition to your open doors but first let's not look at revelation 3 7 and 8 and look at what god has to say concerning open doors this morning revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 8 revelation 3 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing saith he that is holy and he that is true he that as in let me just let me read my scripture here thank you praise the lord hallelujah don't worry my glasses is not here amen revelation chapter 3 i'll begin to read from verse um, okay 11 seven okay thank you and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing said he that is holy he that is true he that had the key of david he that opened and no man shut it and shut it and no man opened it i know that it works behold i have said before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name now i want you to be rest assured of one thing here verse 7 said he that said that word of open door is true god never lies that is first thing you must first reassure of yourself god is not a liar God is not a denier, he cannot deny himself. He that is true and he that is holy. So you are you are coming to somebody, somebody that is telling to you is, is no one that is holy. No one that is true. This word cannot be changed. Now said somebody that opened it. He's the only one that can open and no man can shut. Are you not happy? They said, somebody that opened it and no man can shut. Somebody that can shut and no man can what? Can open. So if we have declared open doors unto you today, know it that it is not we that it is not us that is declaring open doors but it is god that is saying it's your month of open doors it is god i say look i'm the true god i will open unto you doors in diverse places i will open a way in the desert 
how he opened a way in the wilderness for you. It is God that is what? That is speaking. So the template that we have is that what? Baba is speaking to us. We are, we are talking about God that cannot change. So everything we have done about the keys and the engaging of the word is based on what? Is based on God that cannot be moved by men. You know, a man can say something today. And by the time he's coming back tomorrow, he said, um, actually, you see, but this is God. There is no actually and you see in God. The Bible says, once I've God spoken, twice I've I heard the power belongs to God. So when God spoke, speak was, he speak for all generations to come. He cannot deny himself. However, what can deny us from having all these things? There are some opposition to that door that God has opened. There are some what? Opposition to that door that the Lord has opened. Let's see 1 Corinthians 16, 9. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, please. 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 9. Yes, but Paul is speaking. For a great door. Look at that word. For a great door. An effectual is open unto me. What happened thereafter? Can you, can you read that? But Apostle said, look, a great door has been opened to me. A great and effectual door of ministry. But I can perceive in my spirit there are many adversaries. There are many what? Adversaries. There are many I'm going to do. Because you don't come one be your own meal. But they just choose that. Because God has opened that door. No. You will see, we see when we, when, when we go, when we go in the scriptures. There's nothing that concerns them in what God wants to do. But they want to bring themselves as opposition to the will and purpose of God. Why are there adversaries? Why do we have adversaries? Why is there opposition? Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 12. Why are there adversaries? Ephesians 6, 10 to 12, please. Why are there adversaries? Especially for a child of God. Why are there adversaries? Said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the Lord arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. Verse 12. For what? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That is why there are, we are not wrestling against what? Against the flesh and the blood. I would say, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are wondering why there are adversaries. The Bible says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. If Jesus Christ himself said, from the time of Jesus the Baptist to now, the kingdom of God suffered what? Violence. And the violence taken by who? By force. 
So we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and powers. When God spoke in the spirit realm concerning the open door, the devil is already aware of it. So he wants to stand as an opposition. We want to use his agent to stand as opposition to your open doors. That is why there are what? There are adversaries. Because our wrestling is not against just the flesh. But against what? Against principalities. Against power. But if there are adversaries against your open door today, they will bow to the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now we want to look at people who have, who have had opposition against their open doors. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 11. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 11. You know, Nehemiah had a body that the wall of Jerusalem had been pulled down. And he went to the king that he was serving. And God granted him an open door. For the king to grant his request to go back to Jerusalem to go and put things in order. Let's see verse 10 and 11 very quickly, please. Nehemiah, please, not Jeremiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. Okay. Next verse. Now, this is when Nehemiah was praying. Oh Lord, I beseech thee that now. Let me use, let me let me open my Bible here. I'm sorry. Nehemiah chapter one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Nehemiah was believing God and trusting God, and he prayed. And the king granted him a passage and for him to accomplish the purpose of God for his people. In chapter 4, there arose some dissension from some people. They have no business as to whether that purpose is achieved or not. It is none of their business. As to whether Nehemiah did the will of God or not. The king has given to him the audience. But they stood against him. They stood against him. They even said, hey, even what they have built, God can... can even, even the board can destroy it. That is one of an example of what an opposition can be to an open doors. But thank God for Nehemiah. Because he had a strong goal in God. He went back to God in prayers. And when they are also praying... They are also doing, doing vigilante work. Look at that scripture. Read the scripture. That, read the name in the role of Nehemiah. As they are praying, they are also doing what? Vigilante work. Because one of, one of the maxims in law is that God does not, um, the law aid, God, the law does not aid the indolence, but the vigilance. So, they, they were doing vigilante work apart from being praying. To ensure that the will of God is done. So when the opposition comes. Remember what Nehemiah did here. He went back to God in prayer. And not only that. He ensured that he put his, his people to be ready for the battle ahead. 
listen to me. When God has spoken concerning the open door, some people will rise up against you. I said, oh, Nikanini. Why should it be only him alone? Shout out, Madhu Agbani. But because God is with you, and you also are not careless, I say, Allah wa shi ento beshi ojare. It doesn't matter. I understand. God will do what He wants you to do. But you might not achieve it in God's record time. Hello, somebody. But when, when you challenge God in prayer, and you remind Him of His word, as Nehemiah has done here, that opposition will be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. The second person we want to look at this morning is Joseph. Joseph. When I was going to that scripture yesterday, I was just wondering. Even this is off, you put on. Genesis 37 from verse 10. Genesis 37. You know, he had a dream. God was already showing him the open doors concerning his life. The people that expected to embrace him and embrace his open doors, whom he's, he's going to save later, were, the, were his first enemies. When he made the vision open to them, they became the opposition leaders. All his brothers become members of opposition leaders. They said, look at the dreamer. He's coming. And the next thing they did was to do what? To put him in a well. I said, yeah, yeah, Joku. And by the time he's dead, the vision will not be accomplished. But God had known the end of, end of it from the beginning. We always accomplish his vision. The next thing they did was to sell him. Let us sell him to Egypt. When he's in Egypt, that vision cannot be accomplished. His vision is only for this place, where we are. Hey. The vision that God has for you is more than any man can think of reason. They never knew that the vision God has for him is greater even than he himself. They thought that vision, that open door, is only restricted to where they were. So they said, look, let's, let's, let's just sell him and um, let that vision. Let, let. So they sold him. But the father they sold him, God was with him. The only thing you can have when the opposition are against you is for God to be with you. If you have God with you, every other thing is what? Is, is, is zero. But God was with him, and when he got to the house of Potiphar, the Bible says God blessed the house of Potiphar. Because of who? Because of Joseph. But still, the enemy did not stop. The enemy entered the wife of Potiphar. And straight, the vision got into prison. I'm sure at that point in time, even the best of prophets will probably think that this vision has ended. Because it has, it has entered where? It has entered prison. Don't look at Jesus go away when you want me. You are not saying email. Don't look at Jesus go away when you want me. They thought that door is already closed. After all, he's already, he's already in prison. How can this thing, how can he come out? He doesn't know anybody. The only person he knows is God. No wonder Mary was asking, how shall this thing be? No, I know not that a man. That is also the state of Joseph. Joseph must have been thinking, how can this thing come to pass? Uh -huh. But God that knows the end of a thing from the beginning, the true God, the holy God, 
when the time came for the vision to be accomplished, brought out Joseph from the prison. And the man that was in prison days ago became a prayer minister in Egypt. That door that appeared to be closed, that door became open and the vision became accomplished. I don't know what your vision and your goal has been. I don't know what God, God has opened for you right from your back. And the enemy has been trying to close it. Today, by the name above every other name, that vision shall be accomplished. You will reach that goal in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy is doing, in the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be demolished and destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph reached his goal in spite of the opposition. Joseph God did not allow the enemy to bury that, that open door for Joseph. And the same set of people that, were, that became opposition leader, they that came to him and started to beg him, your enemy will bow before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what must I do to challenge every opposition against my open doors. What must I do to challenge every opposition against my open doors? Proverbs 4, 23 to 29. Proverbs 4, verses 23 to 29. Proverbs 4, verse 23 to 29. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are issue of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse leave put far from thee. Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelid look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy food from evil. Keep your heart with all diligence. Pastor was saying, he said, the battle is in the mind. The first battle you have to win is the battle of your mind. You must reassure yourself that God has spoken and it shall be to me according to what God has said. Don't allow any doubt to run through your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart jealously. The devil will be throwing hands at you. As God not speaks, sometimes we say, uh, can, can you see yourself? See, see. And you say you have open door. See. Where is that open door? Tell the devil God has given me an open door and no man can shut it. So guard your heart diligently. People are ready to say something negative about your vision, your goal. Don't listen to them. All you just listen to listen to do is what? Is what God has spoken. Shut your ear to negative messages. And not in line with God has spoken to you. And it shall be to you according to what God has spoken in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, increase your faith. Let your faith be increased in God. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16. Hebrews 6, sorry, 
Ephesians 6 16, please. Ephesians 6 16. Ephesians 6 16. Increase your faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where you shall be able to quench all the fury that of the wicked. Take up the shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith. Let the word of God rule your heart. Let the word of God rule your heart. With that, you can quench every free dart of the enemy. You can quench every opposition against the open doors. Take that shield of faith. Enlarge your place of your faith. Number three, walk in holiness before God. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 6. Thank you, Esther. You have already quoted that scripture for us this morning. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 6. Walk in holiness. The Bible says, without holiness, cannot what? We cannot please God. It makes the hand of God to be weak. Said, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? In a heart clean heart and, and a pure heart. Who had not lifted up his soul or to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive. Can you see that? It is that person that received the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of salvation. It is that person that is walking in righteousness, that is walking in holiness, he shall receive the blessing. So that what God has promised you concerning your open door, you will receive it. When you are walking in righteousness, when you are walking pure before him. Then be ready to pray. Nehemiah chapter 4 from verse 4 to 9. We saw that at every point where there is opposition, Nehemiah was ready to pray. He was ready to see God's, God's face. He was ready to see the Lord's face. He was ready to see the Lord's face. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Number five, walk in the spirit. Because if Nehemiah was not walking in the spirit, he wouldn't have died, be able to direct his people to, to also be harmed when they were doing the job. I'm convinced in my spirit that God actually directed him to do that. They were not only vigilant in prayers, they were also vigilant physically. So walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, God will be able to direct you aright to be able to face the opposition against your open doors. Walk in the spirit. And finally, if you have tried everything else and the opposition still remain there, There is something that opposition cannot resist. Sing praises to him. Sing praises to him. Joshua 6 verse 20. You know what happened in Jericho? The Bible says Jericho was shot within and, and without. So there is, there is no way they can get into Jericho. Because it was shot within and without. But God added his men and said, look, walk around that city for about six days. And on the seventh day, let's see that, that, that verse 20. And on the seventh day, something spectacular happened. When they were singing praises. Something happened. Something spectacular happened. So the, verse 20 says, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass, when people heard the sound of the trumpet, 
And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. And they did what? And they took the city. You will enter into your open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. If everything fails, try to worship and praise him. If everything fails, try to worship and praise him. That will remind me of, of the life of Jehoshaphat. When the battle came against his land, God told him, you don't need to fight in this battle. All you just need to do is what? Is just to praise me. And when they start to praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambush against, his, against their enemy. The Lord will send ambush against every opposition against your open door. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sing praises. Worship him. The enemy cannot receive the praises of God. When you praise him, God is ready to walk. God is ready to be at a at, 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 at standing point on your behalf. So there is no opposition against the word of God. There is no opposition against what? Against the word of God. Remind God concerning his word. Remind God concerning what? Concerning his word. Concerning his promises concerning you. At least God said, come, let us reason together. So when you are reasoning with God, you are also reminding him of his promises. You are saying, God, in Mayo, they said in our church, oh, there is open door. And the Bible also says that you are a true God, oh, that your word does not fall to the ground. Oh. My door must be open this, this month. Oh. You are reminding God concerning what? Concerning his word. You are engaging the word of God to ensure that the opposition does not have a role in the door that the door has opened. And as you do this, the God of heaven will help you. That door that God has opened will remain open forever. The enemy will not have any way to have a hold in your open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we rest upon our feet this morning? Thank you.